a new partnership of nations has begun. And we stand today at a unique and extraordinary moment. The crisis in the Persian Gulf, as grave as it is, also offers a rare opportunity to move toward an historic period of cooperation. Out of these troubled times, our fifth objective, a new world order can emerge, a new era, freer from the threat of terror, stronger in the pursuit of justice, and more secure in the quest for peace. An era in which the nations of the world, east and west, north and south, can prosper and live in harmony. The kind of occasion where the crisis calls into question old certainties and minds are more open to change. These are very special moments and they are not happening every day. We have to understand that it's really one of those moments where there is some higher plasticity and then when we can make a real change. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. It is a big idea, a new world order, where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause. see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is a very real prospect of a new world order. In the words of Winston Churchill, a world order in which the principles of justice and fair play protect the weak against the strong. A world where the United Nations, freed from Cold War stalemate, is poised to fulfill the historic vision of its founders. But the burdens of global citizenship continue to bind us together. A change of leadership in Washington will not lift this burden. All these new challenges are bringing together about the biggest restructuring we have ever seen, not just of the global economy, but of the global order as a whole. In 1990, another old world ended, dominated by the Cold War, and people talked then, in 1990, of the new world order. What they actually meant then was a new political order, and what was not foreseen then but it's obvious now from everything that we see and do, what we experience in every day of our life is the sheer scale and speed and scope of globalization. And it's only now that we can begin to understand that the world order that globalization brings and what it's going to look like, it's driven forward now not just by the balance of military strength, the Cold War times, or ordinary political power. It's being driven forward by a seismic shift in economic power that we see around us. But what does the new world order mean for countries like ours who are looking to succeed? I suggest that the countries that are going to succeed are those that combine flexibility, free trade, open markets, with proper stewardship of the environment, and investment in education, infrastructure, and innovation. And the question for us is how we meet and master all these challenges to ensure that Britain enhances its competitiveness in the process and realize realizes what I believe is our destiny 
of success in this new world order. So, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, a new world is emerging. It is a new world order with significantly different and radically new challenges for the future. The global financial crisis we're all suffering represents not just a problem, but an opportunity. That's set to be the message from the Prime Minister today. Gordon Brown's to claim the financial crisis has thrown up a unique opportunity to create a truly global society. He's championing internationalism and not protectionism, and he reckons the United States and Europe are going to be key to forging his vision of a new world order. And he's outlining five challenges facing the globe in a key speech at this evening's Lord Mayor's Banquet. They're the economy, of course, but also terrorism and extremism, climate change, conflict and ways to rebuild states after war, and poverty and disease. Gordon Brown will today call on fellow world leaders to seize the opportunity created by the worldwide economic crisis to create a truly global society. The Prime Minister will use a high-profile speech in the City of London to say that Britain, the US and Europe should join together to create a new, stronger and more just world order. Now, now is the time to build new bridges across the globe as strong as the one that binds us across the Atlantic. Now is the time to join together through constant cooperation and strong institutions and shared sacrifice and a global commitment to progress to meet the challenges of the 21st century. It was this spirit that led airlift planes to appear in the sky above our heads and people to assemble where we stand today. This is the moment when our nations and all nations will summon that spirit anew. Dear friends and colleagues, saying goodbye is never easy. I have spent most of my life working with the United Nations. If we could create NATO to face down the Soviet Union, we can join in a new and global partnership. But my country and yours have a stake in seeing that NATO's first mission beyond Europe's borders is a success. It has been an extraordinary privilege to serve as Secretary General these last 10 years. for your social security money. They want your fucking retirement money. They want it back so they can give it to their criminal friends on Wall Street. And you know something? They'll get it. They'll get it all from you sooner or later because they own this fucking place. It's a big club and you ain't in it. You and I are not in the big club. It is a big idea. A new world order where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause 